Hello and welcome to a very special episode for this channel. Believe it or not, when I started out on this adventure, I had no intentions of becoming a Star Trek YouTuber. The original idea was to have a channel where I would review movies and TV shows that I liked. Then that plan changed. Again. Instead, I would make audio comics that I would write myself and narrate. Well, the idea stuck for a while, and as a result, I wrote and edited an entire new episode for the old 1970s sci-fi series, Space 1999. As I approach 50,000 subscribers to the channel, I find myself reminiscing about the past and about that one episode that started this whole journey. So I thought I'd pull that sucker out, blow off the dust, and re-release it to see what you all think of it. But before we begin, I want to say thank you to all of you for making this such a wonderful experience and a wild ride for me. You are all truly the best, and I really can't thank you enough. Your love and support has changed my life forever. So again, thank you so much. But anyhow, now for your viewing pleasure and critique, here is my Space 1999 Reborn episode, Path to the Future. I hope you enjoy. Triangulum Studios presents a David Clawwater production. Space 1999 Reborn, Episode 1, Path to the Future, an audio comic created, written, and read by David Clawwater. Quote, If you travel far enough, you'll eventually meet yourself. Joseph Campbell. Somewhere in deep space. Moonbase Alpha Status Report. July 14, 2000. Commander John Koenig recording. Alpha continues to travel through the vastness of deep space, and I feel uneasy. Recent events from our trip through the aerial system have left the crew of Moonbase Alpha with a sense of despair not felt since the moon was originally flung out of Earth's orbit on a course through the cosmos. Even I feel it, which is why I've waited a week to put down what happened in my log. After approaching the star system Ariel, a habitable planet there sent a probe to Alpha. We brought it in to investigate and it was quickly discovered to be a technology capable of creating an oxygen atmosphere. After hundreds more appeared, the moon suddenly had a breathable atmosphere. Believing we were heading into orbit of planet Ariel, we began to explore the possibility of merely staying on the moon and creating a colony here. The aliens continued to send other probes, which started the process of rainfall and food growth. We were very happy at the prospects. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. The moon did not head into orbit, and the alien beings quickly recalled their probes, and the atmosphere was bled off into space, making the moon a barren wasteland once again. Before we left the system, the alien beings sent us a communication, stating they were neither benevolent nor malevolent merely gave us what we wanted so we wouldn't travel to their planet. I believe that, and had we actually achieved an orbit around the planet, I also believe that they would have helped the moon become a thriving planet with a vast ecosystem. And that's where the problem lies. Though we ended up gaining a new food source, for a fleeting moment everyone on Alpha felt like this place we've been stuck on was a home. We were happy, we were excited, but once again the cosmic plan had something else in mind for us. So now we're left lonely and sad, longing for home. Computer file report. Report filed. <sighs> what the hell's that? Commander to main mission! Commander to main mission! What is it, Paul? Some type of energy field just appeared in front of us. We're headed straight for it. Victor, what is that? I don't know, John. Time till impact? 30 seconds, Commander. Computer readout? None, Commander. John, what's going on? We're approaching an energy field. Prepare medical. Understood. 10 seconds. All hands, brace for impact. All hands, brace for impact.
Everyone all right? Sandra? I'm all right, Commander. Victor? Fine, John. Kano, damage report. Main computer is down, Commander. Auxiliary computer services coming online. Paul, get me medical. Yes, sir. Medical on. Dr. Russell, status report. I'm getting injury reports from all over the base, John. So far the worst is Alan Carter with a broken arm. I'll keep you updated. Understood. John! We're starting to get readings from Auxiliary Computer. And? And the stars have changed. Stars have changed? What do you mean? Here, look. This was our position before we hit the energy field. And this is our position now. We've moved. Yes, John. It looks like the energy field was some type of space warp. It moved us thousands of light years across the galaxy in a matter of seconds. Moved us to where, though, Victor? That planetary system we're approaching. What is it? Auxiliary computer identifies it as the Yuli system. One habitable planet. No further data. Sensors? Still too far out for auxiliary sensors, Commander. How long to get main computer up and running? Unknown, Commander. I'm running diagnostics now. I should have a report for you within an hour. All right. Victor, see what you can squeeze from the sensors and the computer banks and put together a report on you, Lee. Yes, John. Sandra, have damage control report to you and coordinate the repair efforts. Yes, Commander. Paul, put a survey eagle on standby. We'll have a conference in one hour. In the meantime, I'll be in medical. You have command. Yes, Commander. You have a mild concussion. We're going to keep you here for observation. Okay, Dr. Russell. Next time, try and avoid the communications post when you're falling. I'll try, Doctor. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Russell, how are things down here? It could have been a lot worse, John. All injuries were minor, mostly cuts and bruises, some broken bones. Good news is, no fatalities, and medical is fully operational. Good to hear. What about Carter? He had a broken arm, but I repaired it with my usual skill. <laughs> I thought you would. Is he cleared for duty? I don't see any reason for him not to be. I've already discharged him. Why? Because I might need him soon. Need him? Need him for what? John? John? All right, everyone. Here's what we know. Alpha was traveling away from the aerial system out in deep space. Then all of a sudden we run into an energy field and are transported thousands of light years on approach to the Yuli system. Victor? John, it looks like the energy field was some type of space warp or wormhole. Think of it this way. You draw a line on a map and to travel the full length of that line, a direct course with a constant rate of speed would take you a year. But what would happen if you could fold that paper in on itself? You would end up at your destination quite a bit faster. And essentially, that's what happened to Alpha. Thank you, Victor. Questions? I have one. How many of these space warps exist? In theory, an infinite amount. This is humanity's first encounter with this phenomenon. So there's really no way of knowing. Any other questions? No? All right. Next thing we know is that the system we're approaching has one habitable planet. Kano? Any more information on planet Yuli? None, Commander. The space warp fused a lot of circuits in main computer. We've been able to reroute a lot of those circuits and should have computer up shortly. All right. Paul, what's our eagle status? Survey Eagle 4 is ready on Pad 2. It's been loaded and just waiting on your go-ahead. John, you're planning on going to Yuli? As soon as computer gives us the green light, yes. I don't know what hand of fate has brought us to this system, but I intend to take full advantage of it. I'll get my med gear ready. Commander, Commander Koenig. Main computer has just come back online and we're beginning to receive sensor reports from planet Yuli. 
Kano? Computer shows that planet Yuli does have an oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere, though plant life is sparse at best. However, Yuli is extremely rich in minerals. Well, that's something at least. John, there's a problem. Computer has detected a slight energy reading from the planet. What kind of energy? Of a kind we've never before encountered. Sandra, can you put the planet up on main view screen? Yes, Commander. We've just come into range. That's some slight energy reading, Professor. Nonetheless, it's only showing up as a slight energy reading, Paul. Could the sensors be damaged? No, Commander. All diagnostics show green for the sensors. There is one way we could be sure, John. The Survey Eagle. We could park the eagle on the planet's doorstep and do a full analysis. All right. Alan, Victor, Dr. Russell, head to Pad 2 and prepare for liftoff. Paul, assign a mineralogist to the team and have Security Chief Ramos and another security officer meet us on board. Yes, Commander. You look worried, John. I can't explain it, but I have a bad feeling about this, Victor. Well, John, let's hope you're wrong. I hope so, Victor. Come on, let's go. All right, Commander, we're parked a thousand kilometers from the planet. Victor, any readings? Still the same readings, John. Eagle 4's computer confirms main computer's readings. Dr. Russell? According to all the sensors, that energy out there poses no threat to human life or ship mechanics. Are you sure? As sure as I can be, John. There's always a chance when venturing into the unknown, but as far as I can tell, we should be alright. Paul? Yes, Commander. We're going in. We'll try to maintain contact, but we don't know what will happen to communications once we pass through that field. I'll put rescue eagles on standby. Negative, Paul. If we don't make it through this, I don't want anyone else from Alpha trying. That understood? Understood, Commander. All right, Alan, take us in. Good work, Alan. Set us down in that clearing, 50 meters from the energy source. Yes, Commander. Alan, you and... and... Verdeshi, sir. Verdeshi, stay with the Eagle. Victor, Dr. Russell, Ramos, Phillips, you're with me. Let's move out. How much further? It's just up ahead. What is that? It looks like some type of gateway, John. Gateway? John, something's happening! Something's coming through! Another me! John, what... happened? Oh... Explain it, John. I've done every test I can think of to prove that that man isn't Professor Bergman. But every test shows it is. Helena, how's that possible? Right now, Victor is down on Planet Yuli with a science team analyzing that gateway we found. Well, maybe he'll have some answers then, because I don't have any. Could it be a clone? I don't think so. If he was a clone, there would be some cellular drift in the K3 readings. But there isn't any. In fact, there are only two slight differences between this Victor and ours. One is a slight scar on his left side of his chest. The other is on his right leg. Cause? They look like old injuries that have healed, maybe two or three years old. Maybe he can give us some answers then. Can you wake him? I'd rather not. His readings are still erratic. Maybe because of the trip through that gateway. I'd like to wait until he stabilizes more. 
Helena, we've got a mystery that needs answers here, and it looks like the only way we're going to get them is from him. Well, nothing's going to be solved if he's dead, John. <sighs> All right, Helena. We'll wait and see what what our victor comes up with. In the meantime, I'd like to take a look at those tests you did. All right, they're down in my office. Any progress, Professor? Oh, Alan, welcome back. I've made some progress. It looks like there's a network of gateways on planets all over the galaxy. And they seem to be planets rich in various commodities that Alpha could use. Well, that's great. Maybe things are finally looking up. Perhaps. But it looks like something went wrong with this gateway. Something went wrong? Like what? I don't know. But according to these readings, this gateway normally operates at a very low power input. Here, look. The usage logs show this gateway has been used seven times in the past two years. And every time the power it utilized was the same amount. Except this time. The power readings went off the scale. Why? Now that, Alan, is the question. That is definitely the question. What? Computer, this is Professor Victor Bergman. Do you acknowledge? Acknowledged. Computer, show me the layout of the repair conduits in this medical section. Hmm. If I take conduit L2 to cross over tunnel 3, will that lead me to the main computer section? Affirmative. Good. Open L2 conduit access hatch here in Medical Isolation Room 4, under my authority. Acknowledged. Access conduit opened. Thank you. See? Like I told you, John, everything shows that he is Victor Bergman. I just can't accept that that is another Victor without some type of explanation. Well, hopefully his readings will have settled down enough for me to revive him. And you can ask him all the questions you want. Commander Koenig! Yes, Paul, what is it? Security reports that the other Victor Bergman has left medical isolation. Left? How? Unknown, Commander. Security! Professor Bergman has left medical isolation. Find him. Paul, lock down all of Alpha's primary systems. Yes, sir. Commander! What is it, Kano? Computer shows that Professor Bergman accessed repair conduit hatch L2 in medical isolation room 4 10 minutes ago and then access to hatch leading to crossover tunnel 3 four minutes ago. Crossover tunnel 3. Where does that lead? Corridor 23B, sir. 23B. He's headed for the main computer room. Have security meet me there. Yes, sir. Hold it, Bergman. Stop what you're doing. Step away from the console. John, it's not what you think. I said step away from the console. All right, what were you doing? John, you don't understand. Commander, computer shows that Victor Bergman was accessing Alpha's mission logs. Mission logs, why? To figure out where I am, John, and when, and how this happened. When you are, explain. Well, I'm not from this point in time. What are you saying? Somehow, I've traveled four years into my past, to your present. I'm from the year 2004. <laughs> 2004? You want to explain that? All right, John, I'll try. I guess it all started about nine months from now, in my timeline. While traveling through deep space, Alpha encounters an alien race called the Hynarans. They are a benevolent species exploring the universe. But the way they explore is different from how we do it. Where we send out probes to gather data, they do something more like an exchange program. They asked Alpha for a volunteer to join them for a year to swap information. And you're saying you volunteered? Yes, I did. At first, you weren't going to allow it, but after they helped us out of a jam, well, we discussed it, and the advantages to Alpha were too great. 
and you relented. What advantages to Alpha? A complete exchange of knowledge, John, with an advanced alien race. But Victor, a year isn't long enough for anyone to learn all the knowledge of any species, even our own, even by you. That's true, John, but their way of learning is different than ours. They have developed a technology where they can tap into the humanoid brain by uploading and downloading information. Downloading information? I doubt I would have agreed to that. You did, John. The benefits to Alpha were just too great to ignore. So you're telling me they downloaded information, technical specs, maps all into your brain, and now you can access all that information as if you had learned it in a school? Not exactly. It's more like learning concepts. You see, I don't have a complete picture of any specific technology, but I do have an understanding of how those technologies work. Their knowledge machine is still limited by how our brains work, and how our brains associate the information with ideas. So you made it back to Alpha? No, I didn't. The Hynarans also have advanced scanners and navigational sensors, and when they originally took me on their ship, they had set up a rendezvous point a little over a year later on a planet called Cirrus IV, which was along Alpha's course. I waited on Cirrus IV for over a week, but Alpha never showed. A planetary rendezvous after a year. Victor, you must have realized all the variables that could have either changed Alpha's course or moved Alpha forward at a faster rate. I mean, we just came through a random space warp that transported us thousands of light years away from our original course. Like I said, John, they have advanced navigational sensors. They analyzed the course Alpha was on and can detect anomalies. They included three space warps which Alpha was to pass through. The technology is quite infallible. Apparently not. You didn't make it back to Alpha. Well, the Hynarans began an extensive search for Alpha, analyzing courses, anomalies, trying to find out what happened to you, but all to no avail. They weren't going to give up, though, promising to get me back to you. And while they did that, I decided to build the gateways. You built the gateways? Yes. At first, I traveled on a ship with the Hynarans, but I quickly realized I wasn't really necessary on their ships. They had the search well in hand, so I came to an agreement with them to build a gateway network in this section of the galaxy that Alpha could use to help us with supplies and commodities. If you ever found Alpha, I can't explain, John, but I knew I would make it back to Alpha one day. That's not very scientific, Victor. Maybe not, but I did know. I just didn't know I'd be back on Alpha of the past. And that's why I was going through Alpha's records, seeing if anything was changed or different, if maybe I passed through to an alternate universe. And, and nothing's different, at least not up to this point. This isn't an alternate reality just the past. So how did you get here? That is the big mystery, John. Nothing in the gateway or my knowledge of it could have caused this. The Hanarans have used this technology for centuries, and never once has something like this happened. Well, our victor is down on the planet analyzing the gateway logs right now. Maybe he'll have some answers. I should head back down there and help him, John. The sooner we figure out how I'm here and how to get me back to my time, the better we'll all be. What do you mean? Well, every moment I'm here could potentially put Elf in danger. How? Because I don't belong here. In my timeline, this never happened, meaning... Meaning... You being here has changed the timeline and maybe altered Alpha's future. Exactly. Events could be irreparably altered. Things that are supposed to happen may not, and Alpha could find itself in peril. Hmm... Paul, prep Eagle 7 for immediate liftoff, and have four well-armed security officers meet me on board. The second Victor Bergman and I are headed to the planet. Yes, Commander. You understand, of course, Victor. Of course, John. It's good to be back. Victor, what have you got? Oh, John. Welcome back. 
I think I figured out how my counterpart ended up here. Victor, meet your counterpart. Victor, extraordinary. Extremely, what have you found? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you step through one gateway, you're converted to energy and dropped into a layer of subspace. Then when you arrive at the destination gate, you're brought back to our layer of space and reconverted to matter exiting the gate. Yes, that's exactly right. Now according to the logs, you stepped through the gateway on Cirrus 4, or gateway number 9, with the destination of this gateway on Yuli, or gateway number 2. Now, this layer of subspace contains no matter. It's a universe made completely of energy. That's why our laws of physics don't apply there. Yes, the tremendous amount of speed required to make the gateway a viable transportation device could only work under those conditions. Well, it looks like a completely random set of variables came together to transport you here, instead of where you had intended to be. How? Almost directly between Gate 9 and Gate 2 in our universe is a star system called Forcus. And the star of that system is a supergiant. And it's in a period of extreme solar activity. Extreme solar activity? I thought you said there is no matter in this subspace universe. There isn't, John. But at the moment my counterpart's energy traveled through the Forcus system, the star in that system released a burst of energy through an immense solar flare. Ah, I see. And the sudden extreme burst of energy traveled through into that layer of subspace. Exactly, causing my counterpart's signal to be diverted to a new destination. But since the same laws of physics don't apply to this subspace universe that apply to our universe, the destination became another time instead of another place. Alright, but that doesn't explain one thing, Victor. Why are the gateways here? I mean, they shouldn't even be constructed yet. That's true, but if the solar flare energy burst intersected with my signal, it must have traveled with that signal to the destination gateway and subsequently traveled along the entire gateway network. That's right, and as a result the network was somehow phased out of our universe and momentarily into the subspace universe, then back into our universe, our universe of the past. That would explain why the logs show an extreme power usage of the gateway network, and would also explain why every gateway in the network was active. Yes, it would seem the safety systems in each of the gateway was the only reason why you made it here intact. And also why the whole process took so long to complete. Alright, so how do we get him and the network back to their own time? Back? Well, John, I don't think we can. What? Why not? Well, to get my counterpart back to his time would require another solar burst for his energy to intersect. Unfortunately, our technology is not capable of predicting when and where that phenomenon will occur. Victor, what about the Hynarans? Can their technology predict it? They might be able to, yes. Can you contact them from here? Yes, the Gateway has communication capabilities. I'll just need to reconfigure a few subroutines. It shouldn't take too long. Alright, see what you can do. Paul? What is it, Sandra? Senses are picking up elevated energy readings from the planet. Elevated energy readings? Kano? Computer doesn't recognize the type of energy or the source. Sandra, get me the party on the planet. Paul, I can't! Communication has been lost with the planet. Switch to long-range transmitters and divert all available power to them. Yes, sir. Switching to long-range transmitters and power diverted. Alpha to Commander Koenig. Alpha to Commander Koenig. Come in, please. Commander Koenig. Alan Carter, please respond. Hmm, that's odd. What is it? I can't seem to establish contact with the Hynarans. Why not? I don't know. Could they be out of communication range? I suppose that's possible. But communications in the Gateway are done through the same layer of subspace that the Gateway uses for travel. 
so they should be able to receive our communication almost instantly if they're anywhere in this section of the galaxy. So maybe they aren't. That doesn't make sense though, John. They've been exploring this section of the galaxy for decades. There should be dozens of vessels around here. But according to the Gateway Network sensors, not a single Hynaran vessel is in range. What are you saying? I'm not sure why, but for some reason the Hynarans aren't where they're supposed to be. That could be a huge problem, John. Why? It could only be one of two options. Option one, the Hynarans aren't in this section of the galaxy yet, and we'll just have to wait until they are. And option two? Option two is the Hynaran don't exist in this timeline. How is that possible? My traveling to the past somehow altered their destiny. I don't know how or why, but it could have. I've set the Gateway Network to continually transmit a message to them. So for now, we'll just have to wait. Alright? Well, it looks like you could be our guest for a while then. Koenig to Alpha. Koenig to Alpha. Come in, Alpha. Hmm. The comm isn't working. We'd better get back to the Eagle. What the hell? John, the Gateway. It looks like it's building up to an overload. How? Why did it activate? It shouldn't have. Maybe it was damaged when I arrived here. What happens if it overloads? The planet could explode. What? That could destroy Alpha. Can we shut it down? Yes, there's a manual shutdown on the control panel. I'll get it. What's that? The gateway sensors seem to be scanning for a specific target. It can do that? Yes, I added the function to be able to transport heavy containers so I wouldn't have to push them through the gateway. What's it scanning for? I don't know, it shouldn't be scanning for anything. John, get out of there! He's gone! made it through. Understood. On my way. Where... Where am I? You're on Moonbase Alpha, Commander. Moonbase Alpha? But who are you? My name is Maya. I'm a crew member here. I may not be on a first-name basis with everyone here on Alpha, but I know for a fact we don't have any alien crew members. Don't have any alien crew members yet, you mean. What the hell? This is the future? Exactly. How? We used the data that the second Victor Bergman collected on the original Gateway accident that brought him to the past and recreated the event to bring you here. Alright. But why? So you can change your future. The entire future of Alpha. Future of Alpha? Would someone tell me what the hell is going on? Alright. You always were an impatient man. The second Victor Bergman was right. His traveling to the past altered the future. How? It seems an evil alien race called the Stahl detected Alpha, thanks to the temporal radiation the Gateway gave off. And they sent a ship to investigate and analyze Alpha. They decided Alpha was a threat, and began systematic attacks to destroy us. What year is it? 2003, March 3rd to be exact. They've been attacking you for almost three years? No. The attacks only started about six months ago. Apparently, they're a very patient race. They watched us outside of sensor range for a little over two years, gathering data. They analyzed everything from Alpha's strengths and weaknesses to what we wore to bed. Then once they were done analyzing, they attacked. We've been able to fend off their attacks, but at a devastating cost. What cost? Of the over 300 crew members originally on Alpha, only 67 remain. And... Only the command section of Alpha is habitable. What? I don't understand. What am I supposed to do about this? You're going to change it. I am? Yes. We've put together this data core of all of Alpha's mission logs, 
technologies we've developed or have been working on, and every shred of information we have on the stall. You can take it back with you and make sure this hell never happens. You want me to play around with the timeline even more? Haven't you thought about the fact that if I do, the resulting future may be even worse than this? Look around, John. It doesn't get much worse than this. And trust me, if you don't change this, you're going to lose much more than you can even know. Well, if these stall are as advanced as you say they are, what makes you think it's even possible to change Alpha's fate? Because it's the only option, but it is an option. One you can't ignore, and one that you'll have two extra years to prepare for. John, we just got confirmation. Three stall heavy warships are on their way. For Deshi? Yes, our chief of security. All oh, right, that hasn't happened for you yet. Tony, how long before they get here? 11 hours, 52 minutes. That's not a lot of time. You better send me back now, then. I wish we could. Maya, the gateway just started the repower cycle, Commander. What does that mean? What's going on? In order to bring you here, Commander, we had to simulate the exact same conditions that the second Victor Bergman experienced when he traveled through the star's energy flare. To do that requires special capacitors that I invented to charge up. All right, let's charge them up and get me back then. They are charging, Commander. Then I don't understand what the problem is. The problem is the recharge cycle takes 12 hours, meaning, meaning, the stall will be here eight minutes before I can leave. Exactly. All right, we need a plan. We need to buy us eight minutes. That's going to be precarious at best, Commander. Why? What's Alpha's status? Alpha's pretty much dead in the water. We're down to one nuclear generator and one emergency generator, and that generator is charging up the gateway. There are only two functioning eagles, but the pad they're in is inoperable. Some sort of computer malfunction. There is one small bit of good news. We have one laser back in operation. You have lasers? Yes, I had them built for Alpha's defense about a year and a half ago, but our lasers are no match for the stall shielding. Well, we only have to throw them off guard for about eight minutes, not defeat them. If I can get back to my time, then there's a good chance none of this will ever happen. True, but now we're back to how to buy the eight minutes we need. Hmm, maybe we could create a diversion. What sort of diversion, Maya? If we could get our last two remaining eagles in orbit, we could use them as a distraction. How, Maya? Our eagles are no match for those ships. They don't have to be. Explain. Well, recently I've been toying around with the idea of using Alpha's gravity generators to create a shield around Alpha. That could come in handy right now. Unfortunately, though, I haven't had much success. The only thing I seemed to be able to do was to lower the weight of anything that was inside that field. All right, how can that help us? I can use it to lower the weight of each of the eagles. Well, don't you see? The eagle would be lighter. Yes, right, right. A lighter eagle means a faster, more maneuverable eagle. And the warships will try to destroy our remaining defenses before they invade us. That could work. But we still have the problem of the malfunctioning pad. I can take care of that while you prepare Alpha for battle. All right then, sounds like we have a plan. Maya, get to work on programming the Eagles. John, head to Pad 1. Use Crossover Tunnel 4. It's the only way left to access it. Tony, you and I will start repairing and coordinating defenses from here. Let's get to work. Maya, how goes the programming? I'm just about done, Commander. Were you able to fix Pad 1? Yes, I had to reroute a bunch of conduits and there's wires hanging out everywhere but the pad will open. Good. And there, I'm all done. Now I just have to upload this new program to the Eagle's onboard computer system. Maya, can I ask you a question? Of course, Commander. Why are you doing this? What do you mean? Why are you working so hard to save Alpha? Is it self-preservation? Well, that's a very cynical way of looking at things, Commander. I mean no disrespect. It's just... Most of the races we've encountered have been self-serving, only worried about themselves. 
showing no concern for Alpha or the humans on board her. Not all alien races are like that, Commander. My world was dying, and you saved me from that destruction. And then you gave me a home here on Alpha. I've made a lot of great friends, and I've even fallen in love. In love? Yes. And I'm just as hurt as anyone to see all this death and destruction around us. This is my home, Commander. And I will do everything I can to save her. You're a credit to your species, Maya, and a valuable asset to Alpha. I'll never forget what you've done here. Thank you, Commander. Time till intercept? Ten minutes, Commander. Tony? Eagles 14 and 23 are getting into position. Laser on standby. Maya, take my counterpart to the lab and wait there. Commander? I should be here. You might need me to... You need to be down in the lab to ensure that my counterpart makes it back to his time. Tony and I can handle things here. Make sure nothing happens to my counterpart. Tony, I... I know, Maya. You don't have to say it. And from the moment I met you, I felt it too. Oh, Tony. All right, you two. Maya, get going. We only have about eight minutes before the stall get here. Yes, Commander. And John, good luck. To both of us. Tony? Eagle's in position, John. Time? Two minutes, fourteen seconds. Attention crew of Moonbase Alpha. As you know, the stall are bearing down on us and should arrive in about two minutes. I don't have to remind you what's at stake here. We need to buy eight minutes of time so we can ensure a future for Alpha and her crew. We've been through a lot, and we've seen a lot of our good friends die. But if we succeed, none of that will have happened. We don't know if we'll be boarded, but if we are, your orders are to keep those stall bastards away from Maya's lab by any means necessary. I have complete faith in you, in every last one of you, and I wanted to let you all know it's been an honor serving with you. You are all the finest crew a commander could ever hope for. Battle Stations How much time do we have? One minute till the stall ship arrives, nine minutes till gateway activation. Maya, what did my counterpart mean by me losing more than I could know? Well, Commander, I think he was referring to Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell? Why? She was... killed during the second stall attack, shortly after... well, shortly after the two of you were married. Ten seconds, Commander. Okay, Eagles, fire as soon as they're in range, and then break. It worked! The Stahl are heading after the Eagles! How's Maya's new programming holding up? It seems to be working, John. The Eagles are pulling off some fancy maneuvers. Report! Some of the Stahl's weapons fire meant for the Eagles is hitting Alpha instead! Lasers, Tony! Lay down some cover fire, and see if you can destroy any incoming shots! Yes, sir! How's the gateway? No damage yet. Maya, the stall. How would they invade Alpha? They have a matter energy transportation device. Why? Because I think we have a problem. Eagle 14 has been destroyed. Laser power down to 20%. Keep firing. Give it everything you've got, Tony. How long before the gateway activates? Four minutes. At the rate that stall is progressing, I don't think we're going to make it. We'll have to take him out. I'll do it. You'll do it? No, we have to work together. No, Commander. You need to wait here and go through that gateway as soon as it opens. But Maya, no time to argue. Don't worry, I have a trick or two up my sleeve. I see you've watched the movies in our database, but Maya, that's one hell of a trick. That's it, John. They took up the laser. What about Eagle 23? Heavily damaged, John. I don't think... Eagle 23 is gone! John, the stall of fire to torpedo at Alpha. Location of impact? My god. Here, John. Command center. 
It's been an honor serving with you, Tony. Same to you, John. You all right? Yes, Commander. I'm fine, thank you. You're welcome. Let's go. I heard a large explosion. Sounded like Alpha was hit pretty hard. We don't have much time left. We don't need it. Look! Hurry, Commander. Go back and make sure this tragedy never happens. Thank you for everything, Maya. You're welcome, Commander. Now go! Power levels are dropping, and I can't keep the gateway open much longer. Well, until we meet again then, Maya. Moonbase Alpha, this is the Stahl Confederacy. You are ordered to stand down and surrender immediately. Like hell. Computer, has the gateway occupant reached its destination? Affirmative. Good. Disengage the gateway's safety energy capacitors. Warning. Disengaging energy capacitors will result in a power overload. I know. Disengage them now. Code Maya 1D3F Blue. Capacitors disengaged. Gateway overload in 5, 4, 3, Two, one. John, are you all right? What happened? How long have I been gone? About 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Yes. It seemed a lot longer, Victor. What happened to you? Well, Victor, it's going to take some time to explain. The information you brought back from the future is amazing, John. It has mission reports, technical specs, and all the information our counterparts collected on the star. With it, I think we have a fighting chance. Good. How's your counterpart settling in? Just fine, John. He's been assigned quarters and is right now preparing to analyze the data on the stall with me. It's going to take some getting used to, Victor, having two of you. For you and me both, John. Are you okay? I think so. I mean, it's eerie to think that out there right now is an alien race watching us, gathering information and preparing to destroy us. Yes, it's a daunting thought. Almost as daunting as a future me giving us information so we can change the future. And a future you analyzing that information. It makes you think, John. It gives me a headache. One thing worries me though, Victor. If our future has already been changed with your counterpart's arrival and my trip to the future, how has the Stahl's future changed? Hopefully in our favor. I hope so, Victor. But if we're not abiding by the laws of the universe, what makes you think they will? Thank you for watching today's very special episode from me, Triangulum Audio Studios. What did you think of my little venture into the Space 1999 universe? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel continue to grow? 
then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.